Your textures look like this because you are making these five mistakes when texturing. One, which is probably the most common mistake, is not using any or a lot of references. If your reference board looks like this, then we have some work to do. You generally want references for the item you are making, but also the material itself from different objects and even references for presentation. Two, relying on smart materials and smart masks. I get it, it's easy. And sure, for some cases it might actually work, but you want to start creating your own material library from scratch. It might take some practice, but practice makes perfect. Three, simple masks. Slap on a fill layer and add a grunge? Yeah, no. It will look very generic. Usually some people can tell exactly what grunge map you used. Switch it up, use everything Painter has to offer. Change blending modes and look into anchor points and add some hand painted elements in there as well. Just a side note, all of this can be quite a lot to take in. That's why we put together a blog post for some very useful texturing resources as well as our free YouTube videos and Sierra Division Academy offers some texturing courses as well. 4. There's more to it than just color. Try not to focus only on the albedo channel of your texture, but there's more. Having an interesting roughness map, metallic and normal or height map makes a huge difference. Do you have a stain on your texture? Make sure it is not only visible in your albedo, but also on your other channels. 5. Be organized. If your painter scene looks like this, then I'm afraid it's going to trigger someone's OCD one day. Organize your layers, name them, put them in folders, color code them. In some cases, other people might need to check out your painter file when working in a team, and it's better not to give them a heart attack.